Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is Tim at Docs Autos. If you are new, thank you for checking us out. Please consider hitting that subscribe button below. Like the video, it gets our content out in front of more people who also might like car related content. If you have subscribed and are coming back for more, we thank you. Today, this is part two of the uh, convertible top replacement for our 98 Mustang. In the first uh, segment here, we went through the removal of the convertible top and kind of getting things prepped uh, to put the new top on. So that's what we're gonna dive into right now. Alrighty, well, let's see if we can get this rear glass on here. Again, remember I have just a few pieces tacked in and I still have to put my holes in here, but there is a little channel I can just set this in just to kind of get an idea if I'm ballparked anywhere where I should be. <sighs> So if you're sitting in where you should be, and this frame is actually pulled back where it should be, I think we'll be okay. Yeah, that's gonna be, that'll fit in there just where it should be. So this top piece in my right hand here gets, uh, gets stapled down along this top rail. And then we'll just keep stapling this in and uh, yeah, I think that's gonna fit in pretty nice. All right, we are back. Only have a little bit of time between uh, after work and uh, kid duty, so <clears throat> we are back now. They're happily in bed. And as you see, I went around this whole base here and put in a ton of staples. <clears throat> Who knows, maybe I'll throw in more. Now this, br this brings us to the next point where we have this other piece that goes around the side of the car and spot here for the old or the uh, rear window to attach and then the new uh, roof to attach as well. So kind of a two piece deal. And what I've done is just put a couple of tacks on because I want to test fit this thing in the vehicle and make sure it's going to fit and is lined up properly. And if it's not, I'll know how much I can shift it side to side. So I'm going to go ahead and do that over here on this side too. And we've got sort of some guides to start with. I'm kind of using, uh, this is my stopping point and uh, this here line as kind of my baseline for uh, tacking these things in place. And if need be, I can move them up and down or side to side a little bit. Because when everything is said and done, they all go back on all these, so it's 16 uh, bolts or studs around the back. And then of course this, gets everything stapled to it. This is pulled taut. So what I'm gonna do now is fit the glass just with probably one, two, three, four, five studs and hold this back and put just a couple of staples across the top to hold it in place and see if that's gonna do it for me for getting everything lined up and set to keep on going. And if that's the case, I think I have to take glass back off. Again, I'm going with a couple of different videos here, which are both uh, a little bit of both segments, new roof with a vinyl one piece uh, rear window, or just another video I'm watching with just replacing the rear window itself and not the roof. So I'm kind of trying to piece both of those together and a couple of other readings online. And those that I actually find credible and worthwhile watching for other uh, information that I may have missed here, I will post those below. So once I get the back lined up and stapled in pretty much where it should be, I can go ahead and test fit the roof on here. And uh, these crossbars slide through and hook up on here, so that's no big deal. Uh, but the big issue is gonna be getting it lined up centered here, and then with the, amount, the right amount of overlap here in the front so we can staple it down on this lip. Because you don't wanna have uh, too much fabric up here, because when you go ahead and close the top, it's gonna stress this back here and probably rip a seam. And if you don't have enough up here, it's gonna flap in the wind like a sheet. Then you don't want that either. So it's kind of a kind of a game of chance, I guess, if it's gonna fit right or not. So go ahead and get our glass set up in here, see how that fits up, and uh, I guess we'll go from there. All right. Oh, 
what are the chances I can do this without breaking the glass? This here should be my center mark. got this here so far that's on kind of where it should be now I want to pull this back that camera's gonna move so what I'm gonna do here is just grab need more hands let's grab this pull it tight and just Lay down a staple and see how it looks. I'm out of staples. All right, I'm gonna hold that. This is a test for right now. I haven't centered it yet, so likely it's gonna be coming off at least once more because I've gotta get the rest of these trim pieces on. But, this does look pretty okay so far. So yeah, I think, uh, I think once this is actually set in and done, and pulled tight, we're gonna be good. Pull the slack out of it. Because then we have our top this comes here and then we'll put this little flap back on top of it. And uh, that's gonna be it, I think. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a pen and mark. I'm gonna quickly grab a tape measure and check this distance here, but this looks pretty well centered. Got just a little bit of a gap right here. So I'm going to, uh, of course I don't have all these things, all these bolts on either. So that's going to cause a little bit of uh, distortion in this, but I'm going to make sure this is kind of centered this way, take it back off, finish putting in the rest of these trim pieces on the side here and uh, set it back in place. Now I know I'm going to have to take these side pieces off again for the roof. So I'm going to tack it in and there is an actual, uh, there is actually a uh, order of how to put these on. So I'll include that uh, screenshot here. I got that from CJ Pony Parts. So um, you want to follow that instruction for tightening these down, but I think just to get everything in here in place and test fit it, I can put in just a couple and not really worry about that at all. And we're looking, we're looking better. We're looking good. I had expected a little more trouble to get this thing in and lined up than I've had, so I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, I don't have the front actually latched down. I suppose I could just to make sure we're keeping tension on this whole thing. So right now the frame is in the, the down position or up, depending on how you look at it, um, closed. So yeah, we'll go ahead, take it off. I can probably leave these as is if my measurement is good and just do the rest of the work back here off of my little, uh, work table over there. I do have these straps, which will get uh, stapled back down as well. And I really wanted to get these uh, two trim pieces off, but in order to do that, I've got to take the back seats out. I've got to take the entire inner rear uh, moldings and uh, plastics out. And I don't really want to do that just to take this piece off. Uh, what I need to do, what I needed to do for that was put a couple of these little clips uh, on and I can do that with the uh, trim piece on. I just have to be kind of careful and not bend it. So as long as I'm careful, I'll be able to get those back on and we'll be able to keep moving along here. 
I'm kind of excited about this. It looks nice. Alrighty, folks, we are still working on this, uh, this rear glass. You can see kind of in some trial and error method here, uh, but I have gone <clears throat> and gotten the first layer of the rear glass stapled all across the back. And all of my trim pieces are stapled in. So when we're ready to get back, we can set this back in place. And now what I'm working on is trying to fiddle, fiddle around and get the main roof piece in place. Now the original roof had, uh, I believe, I'm gonna go double check, but I think it had a sleeve here and a sleeve here for the uh, supports to go in. And the new roof only has one up here in the front. A quick go look in the old one and see. So here's our front of our roof. Here's the first one. And, oh, no, it just have that one, one sleeve, perfect. Thought maybe we got a slightly different version. So that's great. I'm gonna go ahead and get this tacked back up into place here and uh, screwed back in place. And that's gonna allow me to get this next piece up here, this front one. And hopefully I can then get pretty much where the front of the uh, roof is gonna go, get it lined up, centered and marked so I can start pulling it back a little bit and getting it tied into these rear sections here if I can get it out, if I can get it tied in, stapled down in here, um, along here in the corner of the car. So that's kind of where I'm at, and I'm gonna go ahead and get this figured out and come back with my uh, findings because nobody wants to see me struggle for the next half hour, hour? No, that makes a really bad time lapse. So we'll go ahead and get this figured out and come back and hopefully we'll be getting really close to pulling it over the front, stretching it, and uh, I've got a little bit, a few staples came out on this headliner I've got to put back in. Um, otherwise, everything is running along pretty well. I say that now and I just jinx myself. So let's just get to work and we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. Alrighty, gang. Well, another costume change, another uh, segment, I guess, part for the chorus in this uh, video. Just got back from the, uh, the neighborhood uh, potluck, neighborhood night out. And uh, neighborhood neighbor asked me, hey, where'd you get that great shirt? It's my Cletus McFarlane, dad bods and pissed it around shirt. Heck yeah. Or wait, hell yeah, brother. Trademark. Anyways, we're back, looking at the roof on the Mustang and uh, we're getting really close. Now we're down to the tedious fiddling alignment and test fitting. Now you can see I've got the, uh, I've got the rear kind of just set in here in place. I've got two of these little uh, nuts in place, just actually one, two, and three, holding it in place, just to kind of test fit and see if I like where things are at. Now, I've got a bunch more work to tie in. All this fabric here is only held in with about three staples on either side. But so far, I'm thinking I'm gonna be pretty happy with how it lays out. Uh, we do have some rippling in here. That's again, because I don't have all the uh, nuts in place. You can see definitely, you know, there's a, big long inch gap here. So when this all gets sucked in along the sides, uh, that gap should go away. Now what I wanna do quickly is just measure, take a couple of random measurements and see how close uh, this height is across the back here. Uh, if I'm within you know, an eighth of an inch, I'll be happy uh, between the glass, space of the glass and up here. Now I know I've got some stretch in here, so that's gonna account for some of it, but if I can get close and reasonably know that my tolerance down here is going to change this and make the match, I'll be happy with that. So uh, other than that, this is just going to be a tedious part. You're going to have to work on this on your own. Every car may be a little bit different, um, but I've got this front piece here in the headliner yet to attach up. Uh, I've got to find the screws in this uh, cross member and uh, make some holes in the fabric for my piece here, then the headliner will be held up inside. And that's going to allow me then to pull this forward. I have this uh, steel line in here, tension line that runs through and down to right here. There it is. And that's going to keep tension on this. And I also want to make sure this side to side is pretty good. Uh, we do have our spring down here to attach so we don't lose that. Hope I didn't. 
I don't know where it went. It's dark down there. Anyways, we've got that. Um, this yet gets tucked over our uh, trim here underneath. And uh, once that is done, hopefully it's going to be about ready to put this front piece on here. And that's pretty much lift up the roof a little bit, roll it over and staple it down. But we'll get to there in a little bit. For now, I'm going to keep fiddling around back here, make sure I can get this lined up or know when I put all these nuts on here, it will be lined up. And uh, probably when you see me again, I'll have a different costume change on because it's getting late in the evening for me. And tomorrow is a new day. Alrighty, we're back. Look at that, another day. Go figure. Yeah, it doesn't, uh, doesn't happen all at once, especially when you've got family and kids and job and everything else to do. So we are uh, hopefully going to be wrapping this up. And I did a little looking around and actually buried in the bottom of the box my cover. The top came in. Where, hey, look, directions or loose directions anyways. So that's pretty great. And basically what it says <clears throat> in short is this line here, they've actually kind of pre-marked for you on the, uh, on the back here, where they want to have this molding or this mounting strip attached. And they say to take and center this uh, mounting bracket here in the center of, or center it on this line. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, nothing was mentioned about <clears throat> this uh, back glass here, but actually that lined up pretty much perfect where it is. So I'm not going to touch that and take out, you know, 9,000 staples, but that is actually lining up darn near perfect uh, for getting uh, lined up and it's not sagging when I've got it um, attached. And I know once it's actually tightened in there against all these 13 or 16 bolts back here and studs, it's going to line up almost perfect. So I'm going to go ahead, take these off and pull it down, you know, about three quarter of an inch. And I think that's going to take a lot of my slack out of here. And uh, I'm going to start getting everything tightened down. I've got, uh, I've got to pull this up here and cut off just a little trim, maybe about three, three eighths of an inch um, under here so it's not folding back on itself. Uh, I had a little bit of wiggle room to move this uh, up and down a little bit if needed. Uh, so I'm going to trim that off, get this mounted where it should be, and then hopefully I'm going to be able to start putting everything back together for the last time. Now, I'm looking at the front of the vehicle, um, leading edge here of the roof. This is lining up darn near perfect. Here's the front of my, my roof. This folds over a bit, and I've looked at this overlap uh, from the old cover or the old roof, and it looks pretty, pretty much spot on. So I don't think I'm going to have to do much there. Just a little tug to get it snugged up. Uh, but I think once, uh, again, once this back is pulled down tight, we're not going to have much of a problem here at all. It'll take a little bit to stretch out. Um, so I'll have to figure that out when I put this uh, leading edge on, uh, make sure I don't put too much pressure on it so it tears any seams, but make sure this top piece is nice and taut. And the steel cable will run back through here. They actually include a little pull string. I'll show you that in a bit. Um, and then these, as I said before, get tucked down underneath this trim piece. And I try to get this off and there's a couple of Phillips here in here, but in order to get in there, you've got to take this whole thing off and I'm not that motivated, but I can still get in there, put this back on where it needs to be, get this trim situated again and get everything back where it needs to go. So I'm going to get these taken off both sides and put back on where they should be. All right, folks, we're just stapling up the last few uh, inches here on the passenger side. I've gone ahead and done a bunch of test fitting and hopefully where everything sits now, I should push back onto these studs in this rear uh, opening here and everything fits up like it should. I hope because I really don't want to take out all these staples. I did some, like I said, did some other test fitting and where I had things mocked up, it fit pretty well. Made a little bit of an adjustment back with these side pieces so they would fit in these studs a little better. But um, other than that, didn't touch anything back here and everything here should be pretty well good to go. So I'm gonna throw on these last few staples and you can see these areas I haven't stapled, that's where I cut out, I just slice in here for 
uh, where the stud comes through. So um, not gonna, I see some people actually cut up and around. And I'll probably trim this down here at the bottom if it's a tight fit. Uh, otherwise, I'm just gonna slice it, push the stud through and set that bolt or that nut in place. Kind of tough to see what I'm doing in here, but let's see. Let's see. So we've got these studs in here. Like I said, these little 916s go on here. Takes more than two hands or one hand. You can see where these studs come through. I'm pretty well lined up for where the uh, old top was you can see the marks uh, where the nuts went on so I think I'm doing pretty good in terms of getting everything lined up so I'm really happy about that so let me go ahead and try and get to get one two three four five six I gotta find one more one more of these somewhere let me go ahead and finish getting the rest of this uh, tied up here So I'm gonna get this last nut in, get everything tightened down uh, in that bolt pattern, and then put the rest of the back back together. I'll show you a couple of things in there. There's those little side wings that get screwed back up, and uh, like this little guy here gets tucked back onto that weird spring and this stuff. You know, a handful of little stuff. We've got this uh, string here to go through and tie in. And the last part's gonna be the nose up here, this front lid. So I'm gonna get the back, this back end buttoned up, then we'll come back for those last uh, one, two, three, four, five things. And uh, then we'll be done. How about that? All right. One of the more challenging things here was getting this little uh, clip off of the old piece here and onto the new one. And it really, uh, you, I took a long pliers, pulled it out, took another pliers and released the clasp here so it was open. It took a few minutes to get the old eyelet over the uh, the clip, pull the new one over, thread it over, and reclose this clip. Uh, I'll try and show you on the passenger side, uh, but it was kind of challenging to get in here with lights and pliers, and I don't know that I'll be able to get a camera in here to show you very well, but at least don't forget to do this when you are uh, swapping out your top. All right, folks. I've gone ahead and done the driver's side to start with, just so I kind of get all the bugs worked out of it and figure out the process. Um, all in all, not too bad. It is uh, kind of a pain, uh, just more of piddly, uh, getting things lined up than anything. So what we're gonna do first is take this line and run it through, there's actually a hole in a pull string. Uh, my pull string on the other side broke. So I went and grabbed some of my fish sticks that I use for pulling network cable or wires and whatnot and uh, pull it through instead of this wire, this string, because yeah, mine broke. We'll, uh, we'll give it a whirl and see if we can pull it through, uh, but we may have to revert to the, uh, to the uh, fish stick. If I can even get to it. All right, we'll give this a try. or I'll drop it. All right. 
We'll see how far this gets us. Ow, that's kind of tight. Yep, like I thought, broke right off. So I don't know if uh, this channel in here is a little small, my spring is a little big, I'm not sure what the case may be, but it's not gonna fit. So I'll take my fish stick, run it down. Normally, if you had a problem like this, you could throw some lube on it, but I don't want to have any chemicals or greasy stuff uh, on the new top. And make sure it can poke out the end here at the bottom. Give it a push. All right, now let's come out the bottom. Go ahead and take my spring, loop it around the top up here. Give it a tug. Make sure you're not catching on anything. If you do use, if you do have to use a fish stick or something like this, that can easily tear a seam. Now let's take a look. All righty. It's tight, but it goes. Oh crap, I broke my fish stick. <laughs> well, that's uh, not good. Much better. All right, again, he's trying to get in the way. There we go. Try it again. There we go, it comes out the bottom, perfect. Now we have, if you remember when I disassembled it, there's a spot that it hooks down here and for some reason my little uh, cover protector has disappeared. Right down here, if you remember, is where this spring sits. I have got enough slack, it should nicely go right in there. Then you want to tap this down. And then up here a little bit, there is another place that it slides into right here. And you can tap that down as well. Now, the next thing we want to install is this back piece of window trim and molding. For that, we're gonna put the, uh, put the top back down. Now, we've got three little screws here that go in here with this trim piece I'll show you. And be careful you don't drop one of these down here because you'll never get it back. Ask me how I know. Here's our Torx head. We have our molding and we have our trim. So basically, this fits up in here like this. Turn it the right direction. And then your rubber molding fits in here as well. And then your rear window is right here. So there are three holes, uh, one, two, and three. And the top one here doesn't really have anything it secures to with this fabric, but the bottom two do. So we wanna make sure these holes line up with the screw holes uh, in the frame. Uh, if they're off a little bit, you can open them up with a scissors or knife. And mine look good. So I'm going to take one. Here's a trick. You can take a piece of paper towel or something, 
put it over your screw head and then take your driver, whether it's a Phillips or Torx or whatever, um, just to create a little extra friction to help that screw from falling off. Because like I said, if it's gone, it's gone. A little, little trick I picked up somewhere. I honestly don't remember where, but it has saved my hide a number of times in getting little bolts or nuts in, uh, in tight spaces that would normally fall off. So I'm gonna go ahead, see if I can move you over here a little bit out of the way of my big head. Anyways, I've got a hole up here, a hole here, and a hole down here. So I'm gonna get this top one put in first since it's not actually uh, making contact with any of this roof trim. Make sure my holes are sort of where they should be. Perfect there, perfect there, and nothing up there. So, it's gonna set you in place where you should go. This is one of those deals where you start them, you get them going, but you don't crank it down yet because you know you've got two more to put in. Oh, almost dropped it. Still gonna be a pain. A little paper towel is not your, uh, not your saving grace. Alrighty, well you can see I'm warm. That was not the easiest thing to do at all. So I luckily did not drop any of these screws down here. The other side I did, it's gone, but oh well. Next thing we better do is put in our molding. Tucks down in there. And then if we're lucky, everything fits right. I will do any final fitting once we actually get the windows up and make sure everything fits snug. This looks like it wants to pop out on me a little bit here. All right, so I've got these three clips here. Take and bend fabric over. The little ear on the body. And then I will come back and tap it down with a hammer. Oh look, my arm's right in the way. Yeah. I'll show you one second here. Our third one. Now, if you don't go and pull this trim piece off, it's a little more challenging. But again, uh, I really didn't feel like pulling off all the door panels inside, or the, the rear panels in the back seat. So this is what I'm left with, a little bit of a inconvenience. It works, it's just a little bit of a struggle. There we go, find my hammer, tap them down. And now we're ready to put this back trim piece on and we're just gonna finish working our way forwards. All right, have our back trim plate to put on. One thing you wanna make sure you don't forget to do before you put your uh, mats back in is tuck this holder up from the inside. So just like we did at the beginning of the video where we unclipped it from those little 9 16 uh, stud nuts that held on this uh, rear uh, trim plate for the, the glass, just go ahead and reconnect them back up all the way around and you're good to go. All right, folks, we are back. Look at this, new shirt, new hat, new day. Uh, haven't shaved in quite a few days, so you can tell it's been uh, not a three hour project. What we've done is we've gotten up to the last step here and that is just attaching the uh, front of the roof to the frame. Now I've already gone ahead uh, at the end of last night and uh, tacked down a few points here just so it could have a little time to stretch 
because uh, you are going to need to let it stretch a little bit once you uh, put it on. And you also have to make sure you're not pulling it too taut when you're stapling it down so you don't uh, rip out any of these uh, seams. So basically what I've done and I found out is that somewhere along the way I started everything straight and true in the back and I'm off by about a quarter inch uh, side to side. I could tell when I measured up against the uh, seams here in the framing around the windshield. I was just off just a hair so everything's got to scooch this way about, uh, about a quarter of an inch. Uh, so I'm going to try and pull it over a little bit as I do that. So hopefully when I get this pulled over, it won't be too noticeable or wrinkly um, on the frame when the top is up. But again, if it is, you don't drive with the top up on a convertible a whole lot unless you're in the rain, in which case no one's looking at it or it's in the garage covered up. Convertible is meant to be driven top down, right? So let's go ahead and uh, get this last bit done and then we're gonna wrap this up finally. It's been, uh, well, my GoPros are pretty much out of card space and they're not small cards. So we'll see what I end up getting this edited down to for a final video. Probably this is part two of what was supposed to be a one part uh, video. Alrighty, so we're up here on the roof and uh, go ahead and try and pull things over just a hair or at least get one staple in here as a guide and go from there. Now remember, I don't want to get anything too tight. But I want to make sure I get into this trim strip here. Oh, this is not fun to get around in. But hey. You can see I'm pulling the edge over, so I kind of knew this is my tape line of where I wanted to stop. So, I kind of use that as a reference. And pull it over a little farther yet. Oh, I'm out of staples again. Eh, funny. Alrighty. Try and pull this side over here now that I've got some more staples. Get it tacked down in a few spots. Oops, you, you went through, through a screw. There we go. All right, so I've got this uh, stapling started in. So I'm gonna go ahead and staple all the rest of the way around here. And then we'll come back, we'll put this front trim strip on here. Let's make sure I haven't pulled it too taut so that it's gonna pull off. So, go get this wrapped up. We'll come back to put that trim strip on. All righty, we're back. We've got our trim strip here. And in case you're wondering, no, I am not, uh, wandering around the car in my dirty shoes. Well, the only time I consider sandals and flip, sandals and socks acceptable. I don't mean Crocs, I mean flip-flops. Easy to kick on and off to get in and out of the car. And nothing gets dirty. So I'm just gonna work my way centered outside, get this uh, secured down, and then I'm gonna come back, tighten everything up for a final shot, because as we know, we don't tighten anything down until we've got all the bolts in or screws in, because that's gonna end up in a bad time. All right, once we get that done, we put this front piece of molding on, and we're done. All righty, we've got two things left to do. One of them is gonna be to mount this piece of trim up here, molding, uh, with a couple of screws we have left. And before that, we've got this little flap here that needs to get tucked around and glued in. So I'm gonna use some of my uh, 3M, uh, was it 3M Super 78 or 80, whatever the stuff is for upholstery and whatnot. I uh, get that clamped on here, let that dry for a little bit. Then I'll put that piece of trim back in and then we'll be done. Alrighty, we are back and we've let our uh, 3M Super 98 dry and we're gonna go ahead and put this uh, last piece of trim on passenger side. Pretty easy to fit in. Just goes in these uh, guides here, just like the other uh, pieces we've put in.
And then there are two screws that go up on the top here. I'll fit you back in afterwards, I guess. Easier said than done, right? Alrighty, all tucked in. Now to go over to the driver's side, wrap up the other piece of trim. Alrighty folks, we are back and wrapping this up. And aside from the car being dirty, and extremely bright out here, I think the top turned out pretty good. A little bit of a loose spot there around the back here. You know, I probably could have fiddled with this a little more, but you know what? For a uh, 1998 car, I think that looks pretty good. And to be honest, this back here was pretty much, it was a pretty good challenge uh, because I really didn't have a reference point other than stapling this on here in a place that I hoped that it would look right. Um, this side looks good. Our leading edge here looks really nice and top looks, looks pretty good. A little rippling, but hopefully with a little bit of heat and things stretching out, it will uh, settle in place. Got our rear on here, our glass. It's nice and taut. And I think um, I might go out on a limb here and say this is maybe the cheapest fully sorted 98 Mustang around. Um, engine runs, we just got the new suspension on there. So I think mechanically uh, it's good to go. Uh, cosmetically, it looks good for being, you know, from 1998. I don't have any big rust to deal with. It is dirty now. It's been out and about and in the shop and on the dirt roads as, yeah, this isn't a place for a show car or an exotic, that's for sure. But it sure is pretty. So that's why you'll probably never see a, a Lambo or something like that on the channel unless I find a Eurus, which is kind of practical out here. Uh, not a, not gonna find me a Huracan. That's, uh, that's not gonna happen. So I guess I won't have instant YouTube ratings overnight with the cheapest Huracan in Goodhue County or the only one. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap this up here and just, uh, you know, I'm happy with this. For the first time doing a roof and going with a couple of two, three different uh, other venues online to see how it's done. I think it turned out pretty good. Not perfect, not an expert, but I did do it at home and save a bunch of money. So if you, uh, you know, you like seeing car videos like this or any of the other videos we've done, if you haven't checked them out, please do. Uh, hit that subscribe button and of course hit the like button because that tells YouTube we've got good content out here and it puts it out front of more people to see. Anyways, we come back in our next video. Uh, we're probably gonna be working on the Challenger again. Uh, got it in the interior for that, getting ready for the roof swap. And I do believe that I'm gonna have some of the patch panels in for the, uh, for the fender. So be sure to stay tuned for that. And until the next time, keep doing what makes you happy and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.